So this is a wedge, and this is a wedge, and this, well, yeah, it's still a wedge, but I'm here to tell you why this is the wedge you should be using. At the end of this video, you're going to have two methods for using the end bringer. You're going to be making those mid to long range end bringer shots, and you're going to be winning more tour games. Roll the intro. Back from the dead. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get right into it here, and let's talk about the two clubs that probably get compared the most when it comes to wedges, and that is the Endbringer versus the Rapier. Okay, I've got a chart here that shows us the comparison between the two, and really what we're going to look at when it comes to comparing these two are three categories, power, accuracy, and ball guide, okay? And why do I choose the Endbringer like I do? So when it comes to power, you'll see as soon as we unlock the Endbringer, we get 39 in power. It takes us until level five to get that kind of power with the Rapier, okay? And then by the time we get the Endbringer maxed out, we get 44 in power. The Rapier's only got 42 in power when it's completely maxed out. So no question there. Accuracy, okay? We unlock the Endbringer with 70 accuracy. It takes us until level six before we can get that kind of accuracy out of the Rapier. Okay, and by then, you're probably already looking at at least a level 3 or 4 Endbringer, and you've got more accuracy there. By the time you get the Endbringer to level 5, you're getting that 95 accuracy that you don't see in the Rapier until it is completely maxed out. Okay, the Ball Guide. We unlock the Endbringer with an amazing Ball Guide, with 3.6 Ball Guide. We don't get that kind of Ball Guide out of the Rapier until level 5, okay? And it upgrades quickly, okay? We get... A 4.0 ball guide out of the rape out of the Endbringer at level four, and a 4.2 ball guide at level five. That's the magic number, really, for the Endbringer. That if you have an Endbringer level five and you're not using it, you need to get it in your bag right now. I'm about to give you two methods for using the Endbringer to make your shots more effective, and if you practice with these you're gonna become a better chipper around the greens and those mid to long range shots. Okay, so let's talk about the two methods that we're gonna use in the videos today. Method number one, okay? This is really one that I want you to use, especially if you've got that Endbringer level five, okay? You're really gonna need that Endbringer level five. The second method is gonna be for you guys that have all the way from one to level eight Endbringer. But for this one, level five Endbringer is really the magic number. This is a method that you can use. You don't have to use any apps. That's what makes it so awesome. Okay, You don't have to ever punch in any numbers. You just need to memorize this chart. Take a screenshot of this chart right here. I'm going to explain to you what it means. Okay, So when we look at this chart right here, okay, what we're looking for is we're going to stretch the target all the way out. We're going to find where max is of our end bringer. Okay. From there, we're looking for four points. We're looking for max. We're looking for where 75% is. We're looking for where 50% is. We're looking for where 25% is. Okay. From there, we want to find where are we going to land our end bringer shot when it comes to getting the ball guide to go to the hole. Okay. You can see here in the picture, you can see that, that the hole is right there about 50% club or so. We don't want to land there. What we do want to do is land it about 25%, and then we want to spin the ball guide to the hole, okay? Because we know if we land at 25%, we're going to adjust one half of the wind. So if the wind is eight, we're going to adjust four rings. If the wind is five, we're going to adjust two and a half rings. If the wind is 12, we're going to adjust six rings. Okay, so always put it at one of those points, 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%, and they're going to use the chart there. If you're at 50%, landing the ball, you're going to adjust one half of the wind plus two rings. Okay, so again, if our wind is eight, we're going to adjust four plus two, which would be six rings. If we're going to land at 75% in bringer, we're just going to adjust one to one. 
And if we're at max end bringer, landing the ball at max, spinning it to the hole, we're going to adjust one to one wind plus three rings. Okay, so it gets a lot when we get up there to max. I'm going to show you a couple of videos here, show you exactly what we're talking about. All right, so here we go. First thing, stretch your target out to max. Find out where max end bringer is. Okay, you can see it in the picture there. Then we're going to find, in this case, we're going to find 25%. We're going to spin the ball guide to the hole. Okay, from here, what we're looking to do here, like the chart says, is adjust one half of the wind. So we got 5.3 wind. We're going to be adjusting 2.1, 2.2 rings, somewhere right in there. So make your adjustment. Again, we've already spun it to the hole. We know it's at 25%. We pull back, we get the ball centered. We take our shot. In this case, we know even great balls have a really good chance with the end bringer. We great hit a great shot. here, still gets a really nice roll out. Goes down, gets a good roll, still hits the pin, goes in. We get the drop there. Okay, let's look at another one here. Again, spin the ball to the hole, find max. Fine, Max, stretch it all the way out. Here, we're still gonna look, probably, we're gonna be landing it still right around 25% club here. So we try to find that 25% uh, club mark. We spin the ball to the hole. Spin it to the hole again. We know it's half the wind, 3.3, so we're looking to pull 1.7-ish rings right in there, to try to get one half of the wind. So not that many rings here with 3.3 wind, but as the wind gets higher, we will start noticing it go up, but we make our adjustment there. We pull back, we try to hit perfect. And guys, I'm telling you, even great balls will go in using perfect this method. Shot. Okay, get a nice roll out. Booyah, goes in the hole. 30. Okay, let's check out another one here from a little bit farther out. So here, we've got the end bringer and look at there, we're, we're already at max. Okay, so we know this end bringer shot here at max, we find max, we spin it to the hole, get that ball guide going through the hole, and we adjust 5.9 plus three rings here. So we're gonna be pulling eight, nine this time. Using the chart, we know we're at max, we make our adjustment, we pull back, we try to hit perfect. It's gonna be a nice roll out here, we already know our chart's right. The, the, the target of the end bringer is so Perfect small that shot. we can be off even even centimeters or so and it's still going to get that drop. See, we drop this one right on the edge of the hole. Perfect. Dead center. We're good. All right. Again, stretch your target out. Always look up. Look up. Stretch your target out. Find where we're going to aim. See there, that, that pin's right around 50% there, but we're going to be aiming at 25%. So we set it there at 25%. We spin it slightly. Make sure our ball guide goes through the hole there. Here we've got 3.7 wind, so we already know it's half of the wind. Okay, so we make our adjustment. We pull back. We got it. Pull back. Try to hit perfect. perfect no problem. Shot. Guys, I'm telling you, memorize that chart. Option one. Memorize that chart. Going to get a lot of drops out of it. All right, so now we're going to look at the second option. This is the option that I personally use in tour play. This is the option that I've gotten the most used to playing with, and I've gotten a lot of drops. As soon as I learned to play this way, guys, I'm telling you, I've won so many more tour play games because when I get into end bringer range, it's exactly that. It's the end most of the time. I'm going to make those shots that a lot of the times my opponent will not make. So this is the method that I use. And this is a method that I do recommend as soon as you unlock the end bringer, you can start using this. There's going to be one difference that we'll talk about in a second. But here, same concept. We're going to stretch the ball guide out. We're going to get that over the top view. Here we are looking for the pin. Okay. And this is a no spin end bringer method. Okay, so we're going to stretch that ball guide out and we're going to find what percentage of the club the pin is located at. Okay, and again, we're going to apply no spin. Okay, so we find out where the pin is. In this case, that's probably right around 50, 55 percent club. Okay, we're going to pull back and we're going to have no spin. We're going to put the ball guide directly through the hole. From here, we're gonna adjust where that pin was. So the, right there, that pin is at 50%. So we're gonna put 50% on our slider and we're gonna adjust plus 20 when the shot is flat, okay? 
For you guys that have level one through four Endbringer, you get a little bit less accuracy. So I recommend going 15% adjustment until you get to level five. So you'll adjust whatever the slider is plus 15 instead of plus 20. Once you get it to five, you're gonna adjust plus 20 and the slider for where the pin is. Again, no spin, set your ball guide through the hole Make your adjustment, type it into your app, find that percentage plus 20, and you're good to go. If you get a shot that is significantly downhill, okay, you can add 5%, 10% till you feel comfortable with it. You're still going to be really close. You're going to get a lot of drops off of it. But if I know I've got one, man, that shot is definitely more downhill. It's not flat. I'm going to adjust 30%. If I get a shot where I know I'm adjusting uphill, onto onto the top of a green up here. I'm gonna pull back and adjust plus 10 instead of plus 20, okay? But that plus 20 number is that magic number for whenever I know it's a really flat shot. Let's take a look at some video of how to use this method in tour play. All right, so here we go. Again, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna look up, we're gonna see where max is, okay? We're gonna find the pin right there. The pin's right around mid, so it's right around 50%. Again, no spin. I wanna set the ball guide through the hole. Now I'm gonna type in 50% slider plus 20, okay? Whatever number that gives us with 5.8 rings, we're gonna, we're gonna make our adjustment. We're gonna pull back. We're gonna to try to hit perfect. Again, lots of great balls can drop because the rings are so small. Great is not gonna affect it the way shot. other clubs will. We get this drop right here. Oh yeah. Let's take a look at another one. Again, stretch your target out. Find where max is. Here, we're right around 75% or so at the pin. So we're gonna type in 75% to our slider. Again, no spin. We want that ball guy going through the hole. No spin applied. We type in 75% slider plus 20. This is pretty flat. Make our adjustment. We try to hit perfect. perfect There's our perfect. Shot. Get a nice roll out. Get the drop. There we go. We'll get another one. Again, real simple. Stretch your target out. Stretch your target out. Here we're looking, that pin's right around 60% now. Okay, pretty flat ground. Again, no spin. Get that ball guide going through the hole. I'm gonna type in 60% slider plus 20. 3.4 wind here. We'll get our adjustment. Make your adjustment. Pull back. Try to hit perfect. It's a money shot, guys. It's a money shot. This works all the way up into higher uh, higher tours. I'm going to show you what tour 12 looks like here in just a perfect second. Shot. But it, it, it's all the way up. It doesn't matter what the wind is. You make that adjustment, and you got a really good chance. If not 90%, 90 95%, you're going to be making these shots. So again, stretch out to max. Find where that is. Now, this one's a little bit shorter. We're only about 30%. Okay, this one might be a little uphill here, so you could even take that into account if you wanted to go down to 15%, or if you wanted to go down to 10 if you think it's uphill. But again, here, I'll go ahead and use 20. Okay, 20%, it's low wind, but we make our adjustment, type in 30% slider plus 20. We pull back, we try to hit perfect. I think here we even hit great. great we still shot. get it to drop. Okay, still get it to drop. Perfect, no problem. Take a look here. Stretch your target out. Go all the way to the top. Stretch out. Here we're probably 60, 70%-ish as far as where the pin is. Again, we're looking for the pin placement to find our slider. And then we go no spin, put the ball guide through the hole. Make our adjustment, 70, 70, 75% slider, 4.3 plus 20. Make our adjustment. Pull ball back. Get it nice and centered. Hit it perfect. Ball's gonna be going in. Perfect shot. Boo yeah. There we go. Here's one from Tour 12. Okay. Again, stretch your target up. You'll see here. Oh, my end bringer's at max. I don't even have to worry about it. I'm at max at the pin. Again, no spin. Max end bringer plus 20. Okay, this is 11 wind. 
I'm going to go max endbringer plus 20 because I was at max at the pin. If I'm at max and the pin is 10 yards farther, I'm going to go ahead and type in plus 30. If I think it's even farther, I'm going to go plus 40 if I can still get it to the pin without applying any spin. Okay. If I pull back here, try to hit perfect. This shot right here will get you the win in a lot of tour games because a lot of people will miss that kind of chip right there. So there you go, guys. Two great methods for using the Endbringer. I want you to become a better player around the greens. Make those mid to long range wedge shots when your opponent doesn't. Okay, practice with it. Take screenshots of those, those charts that I gave you. If you liked this video, please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button and stick around for more Golf Clash content. Come hang out with me on stream. We'd love to have you. Take it easy, guys. Back from the dead.